I say we uh, go ahead and get started and um, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we have going to start with a couple of announcements from Amy and then move into some introductory remarks from various uh, of our directors. And so I think we're just going to go ahead and get started. You can see um, if you want to listen in Spanish, Nicole is on this uh, line that you see here, uh, the additional blue jeans line, and you can listen in there. Uh, but otherwise, this is the uh, this is the blue jeans connection for the visuals. So, uh, Amy. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Weiss, admin for Rubin Observatory. Um, just to let everybody know that the Rubin Observatory Aura Award Ceremony is being recorded. Um, I have posted the additional live translation to Spanish Blue Jeans Connection in the chat for everyone. Um, presentation slides and recordings will be posted in, on the Rubin Observatory website. Presenters, please remember to mute once you are done speaking. All participants should stay muted, but all are encouraged to use chat for comments or questions, and we will be monitoring that um, through the whole award ceremony. And did I miss anything, Victor? I don't think so. <laughs> um, and with that, I will hand it over to Matt Mountain. Okay, Matt, I'm going to stop sharing and then you can take over. All right, thank you, Victor. And you see my first slide, or do you see the presentation mode? Yep. Great. Well, thank you, uh, Steve, Victor, everybody else for uh, inviting me to your award ceremony. Uh, I'm just going to give a brief overview of what's going on aura-wide, the details, of course, what's happening on Ruben, uh, Victor and Steve and everybody else will go through. But I thought it's always nice to to show what the rest of the organization is up to. Of course, everything is dominated by COVID-19, and this is the rough status of where everything is currently. <clears throat> We're practicing teleworking where possible. I think it's going to be the new normal for at least another six, possibly 12 months until we see a vaccine or effective treatments. In Gemini North, we have, because Hawaii is in a reasonable state, we have started limited science operations on Mauna Kea. And as, a, as you'll see below, we've also re, uh, restarted construction of the Daniel K. Murray Telescope. I see Mario is on and Victor has been working. We're looking at how to restart things in Chile. It's further complicated by national quarantines and other restrictions. And so we're having to work through that. And I think Victor and the whole LSST team is being remarkably patient as we work through all these difficulties. On the solar side, again, we're again teleworking where possible and we have construction underway. On the space side, uh, teleworking is the new normal. We have seven or 800 people working uh, remotely. Hubble is in full science operations. We ran our very first remote time allocation committee for that. The one complication now is that the mission operations center, that's essentially the control room for the James Webb Space Telescope is actually in the building of the Space Telescope Science Institute. And for NASA, we have to do a number of rehearsals. The launch is now predicted for James Webb in the sort of autumn to fall of 2021. And so we're now beginning a series of intense rehearsals for various scenarios of how the James Webb will operate. As a result, we have to bring people into the Mission Operations Center, both from California, from the Goddard Space Flight Center, and from other parts of the US to begin building up. And how to do this safely is actually fairly challenging. But we are, things are going on. This is a first light image from the Daniel K. Inui Solar Telescope on Maui. It is now working. And it's just a very nice movie of the sun's surface. You get a sense of scale with the image on the right. 
Those cells are roughly the size of Texas. The individual magnetic structure is about the size of New York. And this got a lot of press, the front page of the New York Times, which I think surprised everybody in the solar community. I think it, even though there was a lot going on, clearly this image grabbed everybody's attention. And we're looking forward to similar exciting results from, in fact, um, oops, sorry, from the Rubin Observatory. In space, Hubble passed through in April its 30th year of exploration. This is all the pointings that Hubble has undertaken in 30 years. It's remarkable this, this telescope is still going and still productive, still highly oversubscribed. On the ground, Gemini and Hubble was able to collaborate on, on, on a mission to look at Jupiter in collaboration with a NASA mission called Juno. And this is a result from both Hubble and, HS, uh, Hubble and Gemini North. And of course, as many of you know, we finally brought together all our ground-based programs into a single national laboratory called Noir Lab or NSF's National Optical Infrared Astronomy Research Laboratory. And this has been an amazing and quite a considerable undertaking for many of you on this call and many people outside of this call. And uh, I think positions as well for the future. Again, it's been a lot of hard work and Steve and was there at the very beginning and he knows how much hard work it was, meshing everybody's different cultures together. So congratulations everybody for collaborating on this. In February, we actually went through the US Women's STEM Day and it was very nice to see this collection of women working in our organization. You will recognize many on your own project here from Rubin. And so this was good to celebrate this kind of activity across the whole of Aura, from the space side, the solar side, the ground side, the nighttime side. And you can, and again, you'll recognize many faces in this. As part of this, it was also great to be part of the renaming of two observatories for the first time for senior women in our field. The very first, of course, was yours, changing LSST to the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. And this was an amazing result and a lot of work went on by Steve again and uh, working with the US Congress, with the NSF, with the NSF director at the time, with various other members of the community and particularly Vera Rubin's family. So congratulations on getting that done. On the space side, we were also able to um, honor a woman scientist from NASA. This is one of the first senior scientists at NASA who actually result, helped get the Hubble Space Telescope going. And as a result of uh, collaborations between Ken Sembach and Thomas Zabrukin and the NASA administrator, we renamed W first, which was always a strange name, to the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. And Aura is very proud to be the um, mission leads for both the Vera Rubin Observatory and the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. So again, thank you all for your hard work. Congratulations on all the prize winners. You guys have got a very hard job, done a very hard job so far, and I still have a hard job ahead of you. So thank you all very much for all the hard work. And I think, Victor, at that, I hand over to you again. Thanks, Matt. Well, That's great. Sharing. Sure. You want me to take questions or are you leaving that to the end? Uh, I think we're going to leave that to the end. And for sure, uh, anybody who has questions can start by putting them into the chat. So I'll uh, hand it over to Steve. Okay, thanks, Victor. And uh, let me also take this opportunity to uh, welcome and uh, and show appreciation to all of all of our hardworking staff that are helping to make the Ruben Observatory a reality. Go to the next slide, Victor. So, as everybody knows, this has been quite a difficult year. Um, and Matt alluded to this. We we in particular have been strongly affected by 
the COVID-19 pandemic, um, which of course has been worldwide. And so even though we're a highly distributed project, uh, every, every element of the project in every location, of course, has been strongly affected. I want to say right at the beginning that uh, I know that some of you may have had direct personal or family connections to this horrific disease. And uh, we are certainly there for you. Uh, we understand that this is an extremely stressful time for people who have been personally touched by it. Um, and uh, you all have our, well, have all of our sympathy and empathy. For most of us, though, um, we've, our experiences associated with COVID-19 have primarily involved the fact that we've been working at home uh, and that some key elements of our jobs um, have been put on hold. We've been pre prevented from making the progress we would have wanted to make on the Rubin construction if we had not been interrupted for COVID-19. Um, we're all struggling with that. Uh, I know personally how dedicated all of you are to this project, uh, and we all want to see it achieve its final completion and begin doing the marvelous science that it was designed to do. Um, and on behalf of all the leadership uh, of Matt, to the, through Matt at Aura to uh, NSF and DOE, I think everybody has confidence that we will succeed in the end when we're able to get fully back up into our construction program. Uh, despite these problems, um, it actually has been a kind of amazing year and an enormous amount of progress had indeed been made. Uh, so we have very much to be proud of in the way we were proceeding before COVID-19 hit us. And I think as well in the way we've tried uh, extensively to make the best of the situation um, while the pandemic has been raging. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, Victor. So these next series of slides are, um, you know, a are set of pictures. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, a set of pictures going down to the various subsystems uh, of the Rubin project. Uh, so the most visible piece, of course, is what's been accomplished on the summit uh, for the telescope and sight group. Uh, we had made an enormous amount of progress there and we were proceeding at a very fast clip uh, when we had to shut down. Um, although we were not able to complete uh, the enclosure of the dome, uh, we did make uh, some excellent progress at the end in um, uh, mounting a lot of the dome cladding. And so the situation with the facility is actually um, much better than it could have been had, had that progress not, uh, not been accomplished. Um, as many of you who've been to the summit and who, who work in Chile know, uh, we were doing very well on the reassembly of the telescope mount. Um, as you know, this was first assembled in Spain and verified and then shipped to Chile. Uh, and we were actually ahead of schedule in reassembling that mount uh, before the COVID shutdown. Unfortunately, our um, colleagues um, at UT in Spain uh, returned to Spain. Uh, this is still the critical path of the project. And so getting them back to Chile and back on the summit is our highest priority to remain progress. We successfully coded uh, the M2 mirror. We made a lot of progress on the M2 surrogate. Uh, we had begun and uh, were nearing readiness to do the codings for M1, M3. There was a lot of work on the M1, M3 cell. Um, we were bringing the software team together with the actual hardware components. All this was going great uh, while we were still active on the mountain. Next slide, Victor. Although the camera is, is not part of the Aura scope, uh, as you know, it's critical to, um, to the Rubin Observatory eventually, and um, a huge amount of progress was made at SLAC, um, uh, again, prior to the COVID event. Um, essentially, all of the different components of the camera were successfully um, fabricated and verified. And so our task moving forward is simply to assemble the whole camera 
re-verify it again uh, in its full configuration and then uh, pack it up and get it shipped down to Chile. And uh, we're doing quite well of that. We were able to resume work at Slack um, in um, May, at least on the critical components, and there's been some steady progress since. This picture down at the bottom right uh, shows the fully assembled 3 billion pixel focal plane uh, of the LSST camera. Uh, the, uh, and um, that was a huge accomplishment. And in fact, we're going to issue a press release uh, within a few weeks uh, to celebrate that achievement. Go to the next slide. Um, the data management team has been the one that, uh, although it still is affected, it has had the least impact uh, on the project, largely because uh, many of our uh, people who are contributing to that effort uh, can work at home reasonably effectively. They've made excellent progress um, in uh, uh, porting the Generation 3 data access framework on some of the pipelines that involve deep blending and some other advanced uh, operations on the uh, um, the uh, long haul network capacity was uh, moving forward as planned and making excellent progress. Uh, our database tool QServe was uh, successfully implemented at NCSA, at CCI, and 2P3, uh, and used for the uh, Gaia DR2 and Hyper Supreme Cam reprocessing. Uh, and we also made progress on the auxiliary telescope data transport uh, and getting that system fully working. Uh, there is some uncertainty on the final location of the data facility, but we're working through that, and the team is, again, uh, making excellent progress there. Next slide. So we are, of course, entering the period where system engineering and commissioning is of utmost importance, and these efforts have gotten underway uh, very substantially, uh, starting with the auxiliary telescope, which is now operational. Uh, and that, that was a nice test bed for bringing together a lot of the disparate systems on LSSD or on Rubin Observatory that will also be brought together for the full telescope. Um, there was also progress on the commissioning camera, uh, on mating the um, hexapod rotator for the camera with the camera cable wrap. That was a, an interesting test of getting two systems that had been developed separately to work together. Uh, and then a number of um, uh, elements of instrumentation have been uh, installed at the site uh, for the environmental monitoring, um, a dome seeing probe, uh, and some other aspects of this. So this is also go was also going quite well prior to COVID. Next slide. And then finally, our education and public outreach team, which uh, also has not been as heavily affected because people can, uh, to some degree, work at home. Um, that team has expanded and is now uh, um, really well staffed to uh, complete the construction elements of the EPO program. Uh, they're working on the, the website, a revamping of the website and the logo that you heard a little bit about from Victor at the beginning. Um, they've uh, uh, successfully developed uh, a number of interactive widgets that have been tested with the educational community, uh, and this is uh, right on course and doing very well. Next slide. So let me just conclude with a slide about looking forward. Um, even despite the, uh, the issues that we've been facing with COVID, the scientific interest, the interest of the scientific community in the Rubin Observatory is growing dramatically. Uh, and people are really now beginning to eagerly anticipate the start of operation. Um, many of you know we held this uh, project and community workshop. Uh, it was a virtual workshop, um, but it was extremely well attended. We had over 700 reg registrants for that meeting from all over the world. Um, so that's really an indication of how visible this project is and how excited uh, the worldwide scientific community is about what we're doing. Um, many, of, many institutions uh, in other countries have proposed interesting and important contributions that they can make to the project. 
uh, and to eventually work with us in exploiting this exciting science opportunity. Uh, but today we're here to honor our own staff who are helping each in his or her own way uh, to turn uh, the Rubin project into a reality. And uh, we've been holding this event, uh, you know, essentially every year for a number of years. The format has changed somewhat, and this is the first time we're doing it virtually. But it's still a delightful opportunity for me personally to recognize the outstanding achievements within our Rubin team and to honor those of you who've been with us the longest, and of course, to welcome our newest members. So thank you to all of us in the Rubin Observatory staff. And with that, I'll turn it back to Victor. Thank you, Steve. At this moment, I want to invite Mario Hamoy to unmute and Yes, uh, thank you, um, Steve and Victor, for inviting me to give a few words today on this very special occasion. Uh, good morning to our colleagues in Tucson, and good afternoon to the participants in Chile. I will switch to Spanish. In um, representación del Observatorio Aura in Chile, Quisiera extender nuestra más cordial bienvenida a la ceremonia de premiación del Observatorio Rubin. Hoy celebramos a un grupo de trabajadores que cumplen años de servicio de trabajo y a otros grupos y miembros del staff del Observatorio Rubin, cuyas contribuciones personales y de equipo han sido clave para el éxito en la misión de nuestra institución. Pero es también un reconocimiento a la dedicación, ingenio, esfuerzo que cada uno de los trabajadores del Observatorio Rubin brindan día a día en sus diversos sitios de trabajo al éxito del proyecto. Este acto representa un reconocimiento a su trabajo y dedicación y un agradecimiento a todos y todas y a cada uno de ustedes por sus aportes en cada ámbito de su especialización e inagotable espíritu de colaboración y esfuerzo personal. Quisiera contarles una experiencia personal. Yo tuve el privilegio de conocer el proyecto Rubin en sus albores a fines de los años 90, cuando yo era estudiante de doctorado en la Universidad de Arizona. Y allí pude constatar los primeros desarrollos conceptuales de un espejo revolucionario, ideado por eh, Roger Angel, lo cual parecía una aventura imposible. Sin embargo, la perseverancia del equipo Rubin es lo que ha conducido a que esa visión de futuro, 20 años después, se esté plasmando en las alturas de la cordillera de los Andes. Es, eh, ese espíritu justamente el que nos permite tener confianza y esperanza de que juntos seremos capaces de sobreponernos a las dificultades que nos impone la pandemia y lograremos que la construcción de este revolucionario telescopio sea más temprano que tarde una realidad. Hace unos días conversaba con representantes de los trabajadores de Aura en Chile y constantemente constaté un anhelo muy transversal de todos ellos por volver al trabajo, cuanto antes, pero con un gran sentido de responsabilidad y poniéndose a su disposición, poniendo a su disposición toda su colaboración con la dirección del observatorio y de esa manera contribuir a un retorno, retorno seguro a la construcción. Eh, no quería dejar pasar esta oportunidad para agradecer a todos los trabajadores de Rubin por el espíritu que tienen, el que nos permitirá seguir impulsando a nuestra institución, tanto en lo científico como en lo tecnológico, y a continuar trabajando en la búsqueda de grandes descubrimientos en el área de la astronomía y la astrofísica pero nuestro trabajo científico tecnológico no puede agotarse allí. Tenemos que dar a conocer lo que hacemos, conectar efectivamente con la sociedad, 
especialmente con, con los más pequeños, para que ellos tomen conciencia del valiosísimo tesoro que significa contar con los cielos más limpios del planeta y que debemos protegerlos de la contaminación lumínica. En nombre de Aura O, el Observatorio Aura en Chile y el mío propio, felicito nuevamente a cada uno de ustedes y nos sentimos muy orgullosos de que cada día pongan sus mejores esfuerzos y dedicación para lograr que esta organización sea un éxito. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Mario. Y Mario González. Hola, muy buenos días a todos allá en Estados Unidos y muy buenas tardes acá en Chile. En primer lugar, expreso mi saludo a, al director del Observatorio Vera Rubin, doctor Steve Kahn, al project, al project manager Victor Klan, Clavendon, que para algunos nos conocemos más de 20 años cuando estuvimos en la construcción del telescopio SOAR. Muy grato. Señor presidente de Aura In, doctor Mass Mountain, señor director de Aura en Chile, doctor Mario Muy, director de Noy Lab, Pat, doctor Matt, Pat McCarthy. Compañeros de trabajo todos. En primer lugar, deseo agradecer la gentileza de invitar al presidente del Sindicato de Trabajadores de Aura en Chile. El participar en esta ceremonia en que se premia a los más destacados y que han sido relevantes en el desarrollo de este futuro gran telescopio de rastreo sinóptico. Han pasado largos años, recordando que una, maná, una mañana un poco fría en Serena del año 2007, nos invitaron a una reunión. Y ahí nos dieron la noticia y nos informaron que el telescopio iba a ser construido en Chile, dejando en el camino a México y las Islas Canarias. Los que estábamos pendientes y atentos a esa noticia, tuvimos, tuvimos un sentimiento de alegría al conocer esta noticia, porque entendimos que era el futuro de la astronomía y el desarrollo para Aura Inc. Desde ese día comenzamos todos a trabajar a lo primero en Chile, que era conseguir los permisos ambientales, cuyo estudio me tocó dirigir y llevar adelante para que mediante una resolución número 409 del 30 de diciembre del 2008 se aprobó el proyecto de parte de la Comisión Regional del Medio Ambiente en Chile. Con esto se da el inicio a los procesos en nuestro país. Posteriormente tuvimos que hacer una modificación de pertinencia la cual, la cual fue aprobada en el año 2014. Ese mismo año inició un plan coordinado y que destaco acá en el cuidado del medio ambiente, destacando la conservación de la flora y fauna inédita en Chile y que realizamos hasta la fecha. Esto es un compromiso claro, preciso, de cuidado del medio ambiente que ha hecho el Telescopio Vera Rubin y Aura en Chile. Luego, vimos a muchos socios de este sindicato, ingenieros, trabajando codo a codo, llevando adelante su construcción, sin mirar diferencias, solo el deseo de hacer el proyecto sea realidad en unos pocos años más. ¿Cómo no recordar Todas las coordinaciones y planificaciones llevadas a cabo por muchos profesionales en el cual también participé activamente, relacionado con el traslado primero de la cámara de recubrimiento y de los dos espejos, que se hizo a la perfección fruto de la dedicación de todos. Fueron largas horas de noche, pero nunca hubo un pensamiento de cansancio. Había la, la, la felicidad de que estábamos, yo creo que haciendo un poco de historia. Estamos seguros que los profesionales de nuestro, de nuestro sindicato, junto a los directores, hacemos el mejor trabajo 
y lo seguiremos haciendo hasta el día que este proyecto sea un telescopio y que sea entregado a la ciencia, con la infinita información que va a poder captar por más de 10 años. Este sindicato tiene más de 45 años de vida y ha sido parte del desarrollo de Aura en un trato directo, honesto, constructivo y con este proyecto seguiremos siendo el aporte porque la ciencia no tiene barreras ni colores ni separaciones. Estamos todos inspirados en que este proyecto se cristalice pronto y será fruto del trabajo de todos como gotas de agua que se juntan para dar energía a nuestro medio ambiente. No puedo dejar de lado la oportunidad de destacar un hecho muy relevante para, para nosotros, que este proyecto telescopio ha cambiado su nombre por el de la doctora Vera Rubin. La doctora Vera Rubin fue una astrónoma estadounidense pionera en la medición de la rotación de las estrellas dentro de una galaxia. Sus mediciones pusieron de manifiesto que las curvas de rotación galáctica se mantenían planas, contradiciendo el modelo teórico, siendo la evidencia más directa y robusta de la existencia de la materia oscura. Este honor de distinguir a, a esta destacada astrónoma, también tiene un mensaje hacia la, hacia la participación de las mujeres en este campo. Y que en el caso de Aura Chile, les puedo decir que ya la, el, el sector femenino ocupa ya el 17% de la dotación de los funcionarios en nuestro país. Y ha logrado, y este grupo ha logrado una activa participación e, integra e integración, lo cual nos llena de mucho orgullo a todos nosotros. Algo impensado hace 25 años atrás. Pero ahora son el 17% y van a ser más. Deseamos por último seguir involucrados. Daremos todas nuestras energías para seguir comprometidos en el desarrollo de este proyecto, porque es un mandato moral que todos hemos asumido libremente. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Mario. And we wouldn't be here without our esteemed colleagues from HR. So, Linda, did you want to uh, make any remarks? Yes, thank you, Victor. Um, and I, I want to thank you for inviting me to participate in the award ceremony. And, uh, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, personally recognize everyone who's getting an award today. You know, I, I think back at my career here, and I, I joined Aura about two and a half years ago, and I was so excited to join the organization. I saw it as a great opportunity to support an exciting mission and, and uh, Aura's employees. But when I took the job, what I didn't understand at that time was what an incredible opportunity was in front of me and the ability that I was going to have to work with such talented individuals dedicated to their work, the scientific community, and the organization. You know, and, and 2020 has proved to be one of the most challenging times in our professional careers and our personal lives. But I stand back and I watch with admiration at the way that everyone faces our new normal. Um, you know, I, I watch people, um, you know, juggle the demands of their position as well as the demands of teaching children at home, um, you know, parents that need assistance that we might not be able to get um, in front of anymore. And, and I, I just, you know, I, I look at what everyone does and I see you all seeking out opportunities to support each other to improve our work culture and to build strong teams and increase the diversity and inclusion um, in, our, in our organization. But besides that, I look at all of you continuing to deliver on our mission. And, uh, and it's, it's just a great opportunity for me to um, help, help celebrate or participate in the celebration of your accomplishments. I know that typically our award ceremonies are done in person with a, a much more fanfare than we can ever do on a virtual celebration. 
However, I just want to say that it just can't diminish your dedication and the accomplishments that you've achieved. And I hope that the award that you receive today will always remind you of our appreciation for everything that you do and have done during your years of service and your ongoing commitment to our success. I find it both an honor and a pleasure to congratulate both the Aura Award winners as well as the individuals who have met time and service milestones. And again, thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, Linda, and of course, thank you to you and your staff because uh, you guys did a lot of work to make today possible, but also just to set the stage and create the environment for us to be doing what we do. Thank you, Victor. Okay, so uh, today um, our agenda is to uh, focus on the awards, the uh, Aura Awards for specifically the Rubin Observatory team. And we have five uh, awards uh, to uh, identify and to acknowledge. Uh, for each of these, the ones for science, for outstanding service, a new one for diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, a, a service award for technology and innovation, and then a team award. Each of those, I will invite uh, different members of the team to, uh, to say some words. Uh, and then we'll cover uh, some of the years of service uh, accomplishments uh, at the end. So let's uh, go ahead and get started, uh, and I'll invite uh, Chuck Claver. Good morning, good afternoon, evening, whatever time zone you happen to be in. I presume you guys can hear me. I can hear you good. Um, Brian, are you on? All right, Brian, this is for you, man. Uh, you're being recognized for your outstanding and tireless work in supporting um, building, integrating, commissioning, and installing the audio instrumentation for the Rubin Observatory, uh, both with your work in Tucson um, and on the summit in Chile. You have uh, successfully led the integration uh, of ComCam, tested it in Tucson, got it to got it delivered to Chile, where it's now currently operating. And in these weird times that we're in, is a crucial resource uh, and development platform for the project. Um, I also want to acknowledge that you've maintained your scientific interest in the ATLAS project, uh, near-Earth asteroid detection uh, effort, which I think will be a, an important backdrop to um, the commissioning of the Aruban Observatory. Uh, you have also led the acceptance and deployment of the DIM uh, scene monitor on calibration site at Chile. Uh, that was no small feat uh, given the challenges with our vendor. Um, and in addition to all of that, uh, you have also been leading uh, the development of many other small but actually critical pieces of instrumentation that will be needed to make uh, the Rubin Observatory um, uh, a scientific success. So, and on top of all of that stuff, uh, you've done a lot of this work uh, overcoming the challenges uh, uh, with the COVID-19 and, and these difficult times. So, Brian, you are a valued and critical part of our sitcom team and your experiences will uh, be most needed uh, as we integrate and commission new. So, Brian, with your um, science award, congratulations to you. Thanks, Chuck. And uh, just want to express my appreciation to the entire team for this opportunity every day that I have to to contribute to this historic project. So, thanks. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, Brian. Congratulations, Brian. Pleasure to work with you. And now, Chuck Gessner. I know Sandra's on, so I'm going to just recognize her for uh, you know who she is and some of her accomplishments, including uh, the one that's. At Chuck, you went mute. 
there you go. Many, many of you may not realize this, but uh, Sandra has a four-year safety engineering degree that's uh, certified by the Chilean government. And so, you know, that's quite an accomplishment there. Um, eight years ago, she started with uh, working as a safety coordinator for the Gemini Observatory. And as we started to ramp up, we felt that we needed additional help. And uh, while we were ramping up in 2015, she joined us to provide additional safety oversight for our contractors. And she's done a really excellent job at that. She has uh, worked very well with our contractors and is known as the primary Ruben contact on the summit. And she has a very good working relationship with all the safety coordinators of the of the contractors. Um, and she always continues to enhance her skills and began taking English classes while working for Ruben, so not too long ago. But uh, you would be very surprised that she's learned uh, very quickly and she understands and speaks English, in my opinion, very well. Sandra is presently taking uh, OSHA classes as well to obtain her OSHA 500 um, certification. So she will be knowledgeable both in uh, Chilean normas and uh, OSHA laws. I'm very proud of Sandra's performance helping our staff and contractors make Ruben a safe place to work and, and we should all be proud of that. But um, our safety people help and lead us um, to make that a reality. So her commitment to the safety oversight during the movement of over a thousand tons of critical and delicate equipment and materials went without incident due to her leadership. And we really want to recognize her for that. So thank you, Sandra. Thank Hi, you, um, Go ahead, Sandra. Yes, thank you very much for this really good mission. And I'm really happy for that. And uh, special thanks for my team because they support in this process. And Jack told me you, Chuck, for letting the opportunity and participating in this process. It's been my pleasure, Sandra. Yeah. Thank you. OK, thank you both. And again, uh, congratulations, Sandra. And I really appreciate the effort that you've put in. Uh, Moving onward, let me invite Steve back into the picture. Yes, thank you, Victor. And um, it, uh, I feel particularly honored to present this award. Um, as Victor mentioned, it's a new award established by Aura. The first time uh, we will recognize outstanding contributions to promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, Sandrine Thomas is especially deserving uh, of this recognition. Um, I think most of you are aware that uh, Sandrine is one of our workplace culture uh, advocates. Uh, originally, we called them ombuds people. We recently expanded the list. All of our workplace culture ad uh, advocates are excellent, but Sandrine has really taken the lead in organizing that group, in bringing issues to our attention, uh, and really working very diligently to, pers uh, to uh, create and foster a, uh, a welcoming environment for all of our staff. Um, I think as everybody is, is aware, this, this topic is especially timely now in the United States, um, given uh, a number of incidents that have been happening, very upsetting incidents, including this, this past week. Um, and it's, it's a difficult time uh, for racial relations and uh, interactions between personnel who come from different, different backgrounds, uh, working together amicably, and in particular, reaching out to try to recognize um, how uh, members of other groups may see the same interactions uh, that they see. And Sandrine has been wonderful in this regard uh, in helping to recognize this and to um, and to bring Victor's attention, my attention, Joko's attention, and other members of the leadership team to these issues. She's not been alone, of course. She's been assisted by the other workplace 
Advocates by Ram Paul Gill and, and other members of our communication team, uh, but we we decided to single her out for this award, uh, and I'm very proud to bestow it on her. Sandrine, do you want to make a comment or two? Yeah, thank you, thank you. And as you mentioned, it's definitely more t a, a very much a team uh, work, and I really. Thank everyone. And I also want to thank Beth because she's been the first one to push for um, for that group to be formed and, and helped us in, in starting uh, all those actions. So um, a special thanks to Beth as well in that in that work. And I'm looking forward to work with every one of you. Uh, we not every one of you might have a, a may know, but we do have a a plan and we're slow, but we're making progress on trying to find uh, actions and diff little differences that we can take into um, making this workplace even better. So thanks for that. And I guess I'm not unmuting. <laughs> yes, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Sandrine. And uh, absolute pleasure to work with you on all of the things that you help us with. And since you haven't unmuted, you were invited to speak to Tiago's award. Thank you, Victor. So yes, so it is also with a really, really great pleasure that I'm giving, or we're giving the uh, our Technology and Innovation Award to Tiago. Um, Tiago has been uh, on the project for about three years now. Uh, he's starting around the fall 2017 as the Telescope and Science Schedule Scientist. And he quickly uh, showed his skills by uh, really transforming a very rigid schedule code that was not quite meeting the requirements um, into a very successful restructured code architecture that uh, allowed not only to deliver an end product that was cleaner and more modular, but also to enable the community to get engaged into helping with algorithms. So that was a very, very big leap into the scheduler um, development. And of course, he didn't stop there, uh, because while developing the scheduler, he started to learn a lot more about the observatory control system. And in the process, he uncovered uh, some of the, the issue. He, of course, identified the solutions. And that encouraged him uh, to continue. And driven by his experience and interest in the telescope control system, he uh, slowly started to really be a, a great help for all the software team. And his great work uh, really led him to become the telescope uh, and site software architect. And so in his, in that regard, uh, his main accomplishment, of course, was to develop a more functional and efficient uh, software architecture. And uh, we saw that success when last year, uh, so we, we had a first light of the auxiliary telescope uh, in July last year, and also the spectrograph this year at the beginning of the year. And that is really the result of his hard work in advancing the state of the control software development workflow and, and architecture. So he, we had a big team working on this, uh, this first type, but he was uh, very much a big contributor to, to that success. And of course, he's not stopping here. <laughs> His love for the control software really uh, it pushes him now to become a more crucial member of the software integration team for the main telescope. And he's helping a lot in developing all the structure and all the tests that we need to go from um, the scheduler telling the telescope where to go to the image that we will get with uh, all the, tele all the, uh, the camera. So thank you, Tiago. Uh, you're very competent, dedicated, and you're always willing to help, which sometimes I have to admit requires a lot of patience, especially if I'm the one driving. But uh, thank you again for all your good work. And I'm sure it's on, I still him. Uh, <clears throat> no, thank you very much, Sandy, for the kind words and uh, for this award. Uh, it's really an honor to, to be nominated. And uh, as everyone else said, it's really the team makes all the difference. It's really hard. It's really nice to work with a great team and have all the backup and you know conversations on the corridor when we could and in the dome. So, so yeah, really thank you everybody. It's, it's great being working at a, a roving observatory. 
Thank you, Sandrine, and uh, congratulations, Tiago, and uh, thank you for all of your efforts. And since speaking of teams, I invite Will to uh, unmute and speak to our next award. Yeah, so uh, Square is a uh, part of data management. Uh, it's a very productive part of the Ruben team, uh, constantly innovating and giving us interesting things like the science platform, which has been copied by many people, but it was innovative when we started doing that, when Square started doing it a while back. Uh, in the last year, they've also picked up some things like the uh, virtual observatory interfaces and started making those work because we're going to need those in the future. But the award here was specifically for um, application across the boundaries of the project, I think, towards telescope and site of the uh, Kafka and um, chronograph and influx DB systems that we were using in data management to the engineering facility database across on the uh, telescope and site side. Um, so it ties back to uh, Tiago, and you've seen some of the uh, displays from that chronograph system on the slides earlier. So it's been quite good and I think very well deserved, um, picking up a little bit of extra scope and helping out the observatory to get on schedule and on time and delivered. And I would offer Frosty to say a couple of words, perhaps, or even five. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, uh, very, very happy to see the team recognized. Um, the group photo has uh, Ross Albury, who has joined us this year and so was not uh, itemized on the list on the left. Um, Square has some incredible engineers, really quite exceptional, but they're even better as a team. Uh, they have an incredibly rich technical dialogue with each other, uh, which informs everything we do. Um, that said, since the engineering facilities database was particularly called out, uh, I just want to uh, particularly recognize uh, Angelo uh, for introducing InfluxDB into our technical stack, Jonathan for introducing uh, Kafka, uh, and Simon for working so hard with the Telescope Insight team and the commissioning team to make sure uh, everything worked and they understood and could use uh, the system. Uh, we also have Russell Owen, who some of you may recognize as a non-ORA UW person, but Russell did critical work to allow the telescope systems to interface with our uh, infrastructure. The Chilean IT team, uh, uh, Christian Silva's group, also did great work supporting us uh, for deploying at the summit. When I first joined the project, I was told the DM starts when the data crosses the fiber on the observatory wall. And I'm incredibly happy that we are now have many systems inside the dome because we uh, all know that that's uh, where the fun is happening. So thank you very much all. Thanks, Frosty, and thanks for your words, Will. But uh, Frosty, you have a great team, but let's not forget that, um, or we don't forget that it comes in large part from your leadership, and uh, we really appreciate that. Okay. So uh, the next phase of the program is to recognize the years of service. And uh, there are several people uh, and several of the, of the rankings, and we generally do these in sort of five-year increments. And let me start with the uh, five years of service. So these are the colleagues of ours that have been with us uh, in the org organization for the last five years. Um, and normally we would uh, invite each of them to come up to the stage. We'd shake their hands. Um, and uh, for today, all I can do is basically just uh, announce their names. And we'll, so we'll do that um, and uh, send our appreciation for all the hard work over these, uh, over these five years. From Sean, uh, Joseph, uh, Patrick, and Sandrine, uh, Tim Janess, Veronica in the project office, Nicole down south, and uh, Juan Lopez down um, in our team in Chile as well. So congratulations to uh, all of you for your five years of service. And we have one more that, uh, one more of our staff that has made it to five years um, with us, but I couldn't let that go as simply just five years because Enrique Figueroa has been uh, with the program for five years, but just this, uh, this instance of his employment with uh, Chile, with uh, Aura. And so uh, with our five and the previous 45, he has now worked for Aura for 50 years. 
uh, first starting in September of 1967. Um, and re having retired the first time in 2012 after a really uh, distinguished career working on Tololo in various capacities. Uh, I met him as the uh, Aura Observatory Support Services Manager or lead or director um, and he did that for many, many years um, and then eventually uh, led some strategic projects for NOAO when, before he retired. Uh, we gave him three years to relax and to think about building his house, uh, to focus on his rally car racing. We didn't bother him again until 2015 when it was our honor uh, to have him come back and help us uh, with the, what turned out to be a much more significant uh, project to build the base facility. Many of you know that it wasn't just building a new building, it's building a new building on a property that's been there for 50 years and has many things buried in the ground that none of us would ever have known. Um, and um, I'm just sorry that we, we convinced him to come back under the, under the guise of part-time and only for a couple of years. And so we're five years in and I don't think it's really been part-time, but again, uh, this was a special five years of service and I really wanted to, to point out and thank uh, Enrique for, for all of his efforts um, over these years. The next category of years of service, we jump all the way up to 20. And for Claudio, uh, we're really happy to have him, but he started at Aura in 1999. Um, he worked for Gemini and, in, and incremented uh, through several jobs, uh, developed some, uh, lots of really critical skills within the observatory, starting with instruments, uh, working through uh, into optics, uh, and then finally um, focusing a lot on the coding techn technician work, uh, working a lot with Tommy uh, over at Gemini. And so we were really happy to have him come join us uh, in 2018 um, and focus his expertise on our new coding facility and the development of that facility, the commissioning of that facility, um, and as you heard from Steve, the successful use of it in putting down our M2 coding and the current efforts that are going towards uh, getting it ready for M1, M3 coding uh, later uh, this year, or maybe later in a year, probably more like summer of next year. Also want to point out that Ed Heilman has been with Aura for 20 years. And um, I actually knew Ed before he came to uh, Aura uh, in, in when he was working for M3 Engineering and was supporting the work of uh, the SOAR project. Um, and uh, we were really uh, happy to have him come join uh, the Aura family uh, in 2000. He came with lots of existing observatory experience that he had from M3 Engineering and um, has been really a constructive member and, and, and very productive member uh, for the whole Aura community for, for, for many years. In 2018, uh, he formally came over, uh, actually in 2018, he formally um, led uh, a lot of our um, analysis as, as um, Doug Neil started to get more and more other responsibilities, and so we really can credit Ed for much of the analysis and uh, engineering work that supported the team for M1, M3. And then just last year, uh, we were sad uh, to hear that he wanted to retire partially. Um, we certainly wish him well in that, uh, but we uh, were happy that he was willing to work uh, about half time and uh, he continues to be a very valuable member of the team and I just hope that he's uh, using his, his spare time uh, wisely and getting more swimming in and more bike riding in which he's been an avid uh, participant of for a long time and so uh, thank you uh, for all of your service Ed and for your participation in our project in particular. 25 years Chuck Claver. Um, I met Chuck more like 30 years ago or so. 
when we both worked uh, for a while, or he was at the University of Texas and I worked there. But he joined Aura in 1995, uh, focusing on the image quality using lots of his experience and expertise in wavefront sensing, um, focusing that, uh, that on the image quality of the various telescopes on Kitt Peak, um, and really uh, honed that skill there and brought those, uh, those, those, those instruments along. Uh, until in 1998 when he started to expand and was tapped to uh, start helping with this new crazy idea to build a very large wide field telescope that we then learned would be called LSST and we now work on as the Rubin uh, Observatory. And so uh, Chuck along with very few others that, are, uh, that, that still work with us, Tony Tyson in particular, Roger Angel still at the University of Arizona, we've heard mentioned from Mario, uh, all were part of that very first um, group starting to think about it uh, and then slowly in, bringing in people like Steve uh, Kahn from the DOE side and those were the beginnings of uh, what is now our project. Um, and so um, having, a, having Chuck come along first as the NOAO scientist um, is contributing as the telescope and site scientist and then as the systems engineer. Um, and then we finally got him to transfer completely over from NOAO uh, to Rubin in 2013 when we actually became a new Aura Center. And so we're really happy that uh, Chuck has been uh, with Aura all this time and uh, shepherding along the idea of the Rubin Observatory. Those are our years of service uh, accomplishments uh, to mention, and I also wanted to uh, address a couple of our newest uh, employees. And just take a moment to show uh, that this team continues to grow, and we continue to bring on uh, new people into the team, and we're honored to have uh, all of these participants. Uh, I won't go through all of them by name, but um, definitely wanted to, to show them here uh, and recognize that uh, much like the whole Rubin team is, is more than just uh, the OR employees uh, and the OR employees that have been here for a while, We're, we, we have a team that's growing here at Aura, but also we have many other people that contribute. Uh, and that's not just um, official OR employees, but also, as I have here in this slide, uh, contract employees, we have some interns, and of course there's the 100 plus people in other institutions that we call team members uh, that have uh, just as much to do with the success of, uh, of the Rubin Observatory construction. And as, I, as we go through uh, sort of recognizing these years of service, you might have noticed on the, the first year that uh, I had a couple of other observations that people like uh, Hernan Herrera and uh, Edgard were listed as having joined this year. But there's another, they actually represent a class of our team that have many years of experience with us, um, having been, uh, having been uh, uh, members of other contractors uh, like Luis Vergara, uh, were either members of the Basalco team or contractors thereof, and uh, were spotted by our team uh, and lured into our midst, and we're really happy that uh, even though they're, they're identified as new employees, uh, they definitely come with, uh, with many years of experience and years of, of support to, to our project. And then there's also another category, and I wanted to especially uh, call out Jaime Ceriche. Uh, Jaime doesn't appear in uh, the one years or five years because he's actually been with us uh, two times for about two or three years. Uh, and so uh, doesn't officially uh, come into the five-year ranks, but Jaime has been, uh, had one job to support our development of the summit facility, and then he got a new job to support our, our, our development of the base facility, and so um, I just wanted to observe and, and really uh, point out that our team is much more dynamic and uh, than just these, these the static years of services that we, that we go through. They acknowledge. And then uh, another observation I just wanted to point out to, to, to bring this to a level of conclusion was you heard from uh, many of the introductory comments that we're in a very difficult time. I think we all know it. Uh, we're all living our version of it. 
Um, and as we as we go through that, I just really wanted to point out that um, there are members of our team that are doing um, work that can be considered above and beyond. And we have summit inspection teams that are venturing out while we're hunkered down at home uh, that are venturing out and making the difficult um, effort to do the extra the extra COVID protection uh, measures and, and making it to the summit to, to ensure that the, the summit facility that we've all been working on for so many years uh, stays intact and is uh, as safe as possible while we're uh, while we're in this situation. And then there's other uh, teams that I represent here on the t on the right. Um, uh, it, that is the, tech, the 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 technical team both in Tucson, uh, but um, but also in Chile. That's working to get many of their critical activities to continue, uh, whether it's machine shop work or some integration work on some critical activities, shipping it back and forth, working with our colleagues at Noir Lab and, and Aura to ensure that things can be shipped back and forth. Uh, all of these things are some special efforts that are going on that I really just wanted to take a moment to uh, to, to call out um, and recognize uh, throughout this um, at this particular time while we're while we're making these other recognitions. So. Um, this is our, 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 our sort of new normal for a while. Um, I want to particularly extend my personal thanks for everyone's hard work uh, in making sure that we do continue to accomplish everything we can uh, to make Rubin Observatory a reality because um, we know it's going to be great. We just have to get to the point where we can finish it. Um, and so t with that, um, I will once again thank you all for being a part of our great team. At this point, uh, since we do have a little bit extra time, I, I can't see the chat channel, uh, but I will stop sharing and uh, we can maybe look at the chat channel, see if there's any questions, any comments that we want to address. multi-language multi congratulations that's nice okay well we can uh, we will linger here for a minute if there are any other questions um, any other comments but with that um, I'm sure everybody would love to have uh, 20 minutes or 15 minutes of their schedule back thank you again to our HR team for um, making this possible or uh, um, and Matt for uh, the generosity to, to actually make these awards uh, possible. And uh, there's a lot of people in our team, you know who you are, uh, that have uh, helped a lot just to make uh, the last hour and a half uh, a reality as well. So with that, yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to throw out a general, you've already said it maybe uh, a couple times, but just from, from me personally, um, throw out a general acknowledgement of everyone on this team that uh, is contributing to this effort. Um, you guys are all awesome. You guys and gals, sorry. Um, uh, it, uh, it, it's an amazing experience to go through this and um, over my years of involvement, uh, it's a privilege to work with all of you guys and gals. So, um, well done. And what we we will persevere. We will we will persist. We will get through this thing somehow, some way. We will indeed. Final thoughts, Steve? Um, yeah, I just want to say here, here. I mean, uh, it, it really has been a marvelous, um, a marvelous experience working with all of you. Um, and it's really nice to, even though we're always on 
busy with various meetings and schedules and stuff, it's nice to take some time and just acknowledge uh, the efforts everybody's been making. Um, first and foremost, stay healthy, stay safe. Um, that's the most important thing. And we will make our way through it. And we just need to work in a safe environment, wait till uh, COVID allows us to get fully back into a gear, uh, and then move forward. And we'll have champagne at the end. You can all rely on that. That would be about the same time we'll actually be able to get people some some of the actual hardware for their years of service and for their awards. Um, uh, but in the meantime, uh, this this has been recorded, and that may may you take that home and put that on your shelf. <laughs>